Hello, this is part 44 of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to begin discussing the Beatitudes, which we'll explain here momentarily. Overall, this is our 84th New Testament Bible study. During the last Bible study, we introduced the Sermon on the Plain, which appears to be a sermon that the Lord Jesus gave while standing in a plain. This is located in the Gospel of Luke, and we also introduced the Sermon on the Mount, which is a sermon that appears to have been conducted while Jesus was standing in a mountain, and this is located in the Gospel of Matthew. During this Bible study, we would like to start comparing these two sermons. Let's get started. I've arranged the two sermons side by side. We have the Sermon on the Mount over here on the left in the Gospel of Matthew, and then we have the Sermon on the Plain over here on the right in the Gospel of Luke. One similarity is that both the sermons start off with these statements about being blessed, which I've highlighted in yellow. You may have heard of these phrases being referred to as the Beatitudes. My understanding, just from searching on the internet, is that the word Beatitude comes from a Latin phrase meaning blessed or blessed are or something to that effect. From looking at this word blessed or blessed, different people pronounce it differently, you can tell that there are more of these blessed statements over here in the Gospel of Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, whereas in the Gospel of Luke there only appears to be four. Also the Gospel of Luke has these four woe statements, which do not appear to be over here in the Gospel of Matthew. Next, let's highlight similar information in both sermons with the same collars. Looking at the Sermon on the Plain, you can see that it appears that each of the woes match up with a blessed, at least they're very similar or rather they're kind of inverse statements from each other, but along the same lines as far as the subject that they're talking about. The grays have to do with being hated or spoken well of, the greens with laughing or weeping, the blues with being full or hungry, the pinks with being poor and rich. Furthermore, the blessed statements here in the Sermon on the Plain in the Gospel of Luke are over here in the Gospel of Matthew, Sermon on the Mount, or at least they're similar. But the Gospel of Matthew, or Sermon on the Mount, has some additional blessed statements that aren't in the Sermon on the Plain. In the multiple sermons that the Lord Jesus probably gave, during his earthly ministry, doesn't it make sense that some of the information would be presented more than once and also that there would be variations in the different sermons to present the information differently? Let's now briefly read through these two beginnings to the sermons. In the Gospel of Matthew we read, And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice, and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Shifting over to the Sermon on the Plain in Luke chapter 6, there we read, And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye 
that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven, for in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. As a quick aside, there's more than one Greek word that's translated as blessed in the New Testament. For example, in Luke 6.28 it says, Bless them that curse you. This word blessed, the underlying Greek word, is different from the word blessed here in these Beatitudes. The underlying Greek word here for bless in Luke 6.28, according to Strong's Greek Dictionary, this underlying Greek word means to speak well of. So basically speak well of them that curse you. So speak well of or praise among other things. Bless them that curse you. Whereas this blessed word here in the Beatitudes, according to Strong's Greek Dictionary, this word means fortunate or happy. Young's literal translation translates this phrase here in Matthew 5.3 as happy the poor in spirit. A couple of other things in Strong's Greek Dictionary that indicates what this blessed word could mean are supremely blessed and well off, among others. Keeping this in mind, it might be hard to get our minds around thinking of being either fortunate, well off, happy, supremely blessed, and mourning or weeping. Let's compare what's highlighted in green here. In the Sermon on the Plain it states, Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Over in the Sermon on the Mount it states similarly, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. So are these fairly similar? It seems like mourning is associated with weeping, being comforted, and laughing also may be similar. Laughing may be being a little bit more extreme than being comforted. Comparing the uh, blessed phrase here to the woe phrase down here, we have, Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Here in the woe part we have both weep and mourn. There's a number of different commentaries out there. Some appear to indicate that this mourning and weeping should be mourning and weeping for our sins or the sins of others, or this laughing is laughing about sin. That seems like a pretty intriguing thought that maybe here in this world we should encourage ourselves not to rejoice in sin or the sins of others. There's probably a lot more in-depth Bible study that could be done on this subject. I don't want to deter somebody from something the Lord is leading them to. Lord willing, maybe we'll learn more in the future. One last thought before we wrap up. Notice here in the Gospel of Matthew that it makes reference to the kingdom of heaven, whereas in the Gospel of Luke, it says the kingdom of God. Interesting enough, the Gospel of Matthew is the only Gospel that uses that phrase, Kingdom of Heaven, and it actually uses the phrase Kingdom of God also at different times. There's some commentary out there explaining the difference between the Kingdom of Heaven and the Kingdom of God. I don't fully understand it myself, so for this Bible study I'll just point out that there are those two different phrases. Let's stop here for now. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future. If I got to share anything good, it's a blessing from God. Thank you. Goodbye.